It's my pleasure now to turn the evening over to our MC, the novelist Anya Ulinich, one of the National Book Foundation's 2007 Five Under 35 selections and the author of Petropolis. Moving from Russia to Phoenix with her family, she attended the Art Institute of Chicago and received an MFA from the University of California at Davis and now lives in Brooklyn. So please join me in welcoming Anya. Thank you. So, oops. Yesterday, as I was seized with stage fright, two people gave me advice. Just mention Obama, my friend said, and everyone will clap. Um, my 10-year-old daughter, who has a crush on Obama's children, agreed, but she also suggested that I practice pronouncing the word book. Remember, it's not book, mama, it's book. So I'll try today. Um, it's great to be here introducing 20 happy writers in this warm room, while the freezing weather and the chilling economic news are trying to outdo each other on the outside. I think everybody here wonders, what does this politically hopeful and economically spooky time mean for the arts, and in particular for literature? I come from a country that serves up bad times to its people with some regularity. <laughs> it's fair to say that most Russian adults remember living in poverty. Strangely, these days, I've noticed quite a few upbeat voices in the Russian media. These voices belong to sociologists, sociologists and culture studies people who also happen to be sentimental fools. Remember the time, they say, when we used to sit in our kitchens, chase vodka with black bread and bologna, and recite Svitaeva and Brodsky? Remember experimental plays and readings put up in dilapidated houses of culture before the houses of culture were turned into BMW dealerships? Remember when the only one the only fun thing on TV was a badly dubbed Brazilian telenovela called Isaura the Slave Girl, and our teenagers used to read books. <laughs> I remember, I was one of those teenagers and I did read a lot. Along with other Moscow kids, I haunted the building where Volan made his home in Bulgakov's Master and Margarita. We annoyed the tenants with our shrieks and graffiti. See, a sentimental fool may say, when all there is to eat is vodka and bologna, even graffiti turns literary. <laughs> Wait until product placement dries up, ancient telenovelas return to TV, and no one can afford to see Madonna in concert. Our children will begin to read, and our adults will begin to write and make avant-garde theater and think again. The way they did before, they became distracted by food other than bologna, and by vacations other than in a tent. <laughs> of course, it's terribly stupid to romanticize poverty. But when it comes to books, basic math seems to agree with myopic nostalgists. Writers are purveyors of cheap entertainment. An average novel is about 300 pages long. It takes two minutes to read a page, so when we pay $14 for a paperback, we're buying 10 hours of pleasure. That's five times as long as a movie. When we lend a book to a friend, the cumulative amount of pleasure doubles. As my grandmother used to say when she spotted a bargain, that's cheap and angry. <laughs> my grandmother became a lifelong reader thanks to the library volunteers who carried free books into the tenements of the 1920s Kiev. Of course, unlike in the 1920s, books now have to compete with television. But in bad times, television will show reruns. And uh, if not of Isaura, the slave girl, then say of Law and Order. And we all know the sanity crushing rule of Law and Order reruns. Every time you turn on the TV, it's always the same episode. <laughs> and that's no fun. So who knows, maybe while we sit here today, some former layman brother or layman sister is working on the great American novel that he or she had always wanted to write. Or maybe they're writing a fat volume about sexy vampires he or she had always wanted to write. <laughs> Whatever it turns out to be, it will be cheap and angry. And it, is, it will be easy to take along when vacationing in a tent. <laughs> it is on this hopeful note that I'm going to introduce this year's National Book Award finalist. <laughs> You 
even if we end up eating bologna and black bread for a few years, we're fortunate to have their wonderful books. <laughs>